Hi, Anna. I'm Christina Summers. I thought it was important to reach out to you. I found your contact information in Thomas's phone, and I hope you don't mind me getting in touch. Hello, Christina. I must admit, this is quite unexpected. I appreciate your transparency in contacting me. What prompted you to reach out? Well, Anna, there is something I need to tell you. I've been in a serious relationship with Thomas for about a year now. A serious relationship? But Thomas and I are married. Why would he be in a serious relationship with you? Do you understand the implications of dating a married man? Yes, Anna. I understand the gravity of the situation. I just want to make it clear that Thomas doesn't love you. We've been truly committed to each other for the past year. So, you're suggesting that you and Thomas are urging me to get a divorce? Is that what this is about? Exactly, Anna. The truth is, he finds it challenging to be married to you. He shared numerous grievances about your relationship. I contacted you because I believe it's best for both of you. If you were to consider a divorce, has Thomas directly expressed to you that he wants to end our marriage? Or is this based on your assumptions? I hear complaints from him practically every day. Given that you both work at the same company and live under the same roof, he feels constrained. Additionally, he's mentioned feeling insecure because you're more educated than him, making him feel inadequate. You shouldn't undermine your husband like that. I've never belittled him. He struggled with certain issues for a while, and I believe he could benefit from therapy. I've already mentioned that he complains about you regularly. It's clear. He wants a divorce. Why else would he be in a relationship with me? You mentioned finding my contact information in Thomas's phone. Does he know that you've been going through his phone and reaching out to me? No. He's unaware of my actions. I'm doing this for his well-being. I thought I could take the necessary steps he might be reluctant to take to free him from his unhappiness. So you're acting out of concern for him? Absolutely. He genuinely seems happier when we're together. When our days conclude, and it's time for him to return home. He appears distraught. I can't stand seeing him like that. Don't you feel any remorse for keeping him tied to a relationship that makes him miserable? Don't you want him to be happy? Of course I want him to be happy. That's precisely why I married him. To share a happy life together. When was the last time you two went on a date? Thomas takes me to exquisite restaurants almost every day. We recently dined at a high-class French restaurant, and he even ordered an incredibly expensive wine. He bought me a stunning gown and shoes just to meet the dress code. Oh, and he also bought me some fabulous presents. Does he ever do that for you? He does that for you? I'm genuinely taken aback. He's not one to give gifts. Our schedules have been hectic lately, limiting our time together. But I had no idea he was spending so much time with you instead of working. He'd rather spend money on me than you. I mean, he has spent more money on me than you. While he doesn't spend everything on me, his gestures speak volumes about his feelings. I can't deny what you're telling me, but I need to talk to Thomas directly about this. I'll contact you after discussing this matter with him. Please, consider suggesting a divorce to him. He'd be much happier with me than continuing to stay by your side. I can make him happy, and I want to see him thrive. Don't rob him of the chance for genuine happiness.
Hey, Thomas. I received a message from someone named Christina Summers. Does that name ring a bell? Christina messaged you? What did she say? According to Christina, she's been having an affair with you. And she suggested we should get a divorce. Care to explain? Well, the thing is... Just tell me the truth. I don't want to hear half-baked justifications. Christina has probably spilled everything, so there's no point in denying it. To be honest. So, everything Christina told me is true? Yes, everything she told you is true. If you investigate, you'll find evidence of our relationship. There's no sense in lying about it. So when you claimed to be busy with work, you were actually covering up this affair? And you don't feel any remorse? No remorse, no excuses. But there might be some justifications. Christina contacted you because she cares about me, right? She can't help being kind. Unlike some others I've been with, you never cared about anyone but yourself. What are you accusing me of? I've done countless things for you. And you're willing to throw our lives away so easily. I committed to prevent you two from being together. If you stand in the way of our happiness, you'll prove everything I've felt about you. You're the monster in this relationship. I just want to be free, so don't chain me to you out of your selfish desire. If you do, you'll make yourself the villain. Christina and I share true love, and if there's any compassion in your heart, you will let us be happy. Fine. You've made your point. It's clear you're infatuated with her. And there's no point discussing what you want. Let's talk about getting a divorce. We need to decide on the terms. Agreed. You can keep the house, car, furniture, and appliances. I'll move back in with my parents for now, and Christina and I will stay there. You're getting divorced and moving back with your parents? Living there with your new love? The four of you in that apartment? It's spacious, with a spare room. It'll be fine. Well, if you're okay with those terms, then that's fine with me. We can discuss the financial aspect later. I'll pay whatever it takes. I just want to end this marriage as soon as possible. I'm sorry for choosing a younger woman like Christina, but she understands my needs. You've done things for me, and I hope you can understand where I'm coming from. What did I do wrong? We've been married for six years, and there's no child. You've stolen away my life without giving my parents any grandchildren. My mother has urged me to divorce you, and that's how I met Christina. My mother believes Christina is a better fit. She's young and willing to start a family. I want to show my parents their first grandchild. I thought I got along with your parents, but I guess I was wrong. They secretly hated me all this time. You're always focused on work. I made a mistake marrying you. You regret our life together? To be honest, you're not conventionally attractive, and you aren't giving me any children. If I were with Christina, maybe I would have had children by now. I picked you, but I've had to endure six years of my parents attacking me. I was protecting you from their disdain. But it took a toll on me, and I can't take it any longer. You were protecting me by keeping information from me? By letting me do things for your parents, while not informing me that they spoke ill of me behind my back? Even though you've been having an affair for a whole year? You could have gone for a divorce before starting an affair, right? If you felt that you wasted six years of your life with me, you could have asked for a divorce before involving another woman. I was thinking of you. I didn't want to hurt you, especially because I still hadn't intended on getting a divorce. But Christina contacting you gave me the courage. I have no regrets because we made it this far. Is that right? You now have no regrets. You're spineless. Well, I've got to get going. Bye. Thomas told me about your impending divorce. I'm relieved I gathered the courage to reach out. 
I was worried about him taking forever to initiate the divorce proceedings. I felt a bit uneasy, thinking I might have intruded where I shouldn't have. Well, we're not divorced yet. There's still paperwork to file and decisions to make before we can make that happen. It's going to be quite a process. And there's a lot to handle. Any idea when the divorce will be finalized? I'm just curious about when we can move forward with our lives. If you need evidence of his affair to expedite the divorce, I can provide that. I'm willing to contribute to any costs to speed things up. Please, for Thomas's sake, end this quickly. He's on the board of directors, so don't hold him up with the divorce proceedings too long. Thomas cried to me, claiming you see him as nothing more than an ATM. What? Why would he think I consider him as an ATM? Well, he's on the board of directors, so weren't you benefiting from his money? Just get divorced quickly and then leave his company. Please. I suppose I'll have to terminate my soon-to-be ex-husband. What? You're firing him? <laughs> LOL. What are you talking about? He's on the board of directors. Aren't you just some employee? That's what Thomas told me. There's no way a low-level office worker like you could get him fired. What are you talking about? I'm no such thing. We work for the same company, but you've got the rules reversed. I'm the one in charge, and he's my employee. What are you saying? Thomas isn't on the board of directors? My future ex-mother-in-law complained so much that it didn't look good for me to be married to an ordinary employee. So yes, I promoted him to a seat on the board of directors. But honestly, it's mostly a name only. That's the only reason he has a position on the board. Then, it's your company? You're in charge of the whole company? Yes. If you look at the company's website, I'm listed as the CEO. There's a picture of me and my comments on the direction I plan to take with the company. You can confirm it yourself. I didn't check that deeply into things. I run the company. So quitting isn't a decision I can actually make. If I need to ensure that we don't get close to one another, I'll have to let Thomas go. The faster option, however, would be if he just handed in a letter of resignation. Could you ask him to do that for me? I understand. I know what needs to happen now. Once you two are divorced, he can use his knowledge and experience from the board of directors to find a new job. He might even start his own company. Even if I were to fire him, he could start his own company and surpass yours, even absorb it. I'm sure he'd enjoy that taking over his ex-wife's company after she terminated him. It might be his turn then. He doesn't know how to start his own company. Thomas isn't a type to be used by someone else. He's a kind of guy who uses others. The kind who should be at the top. I think you're blinded by your love for him. You can't see the reality in front of you. I can just picture it in a few years. Thomas's company will be much larger than yours. It's okay if you tremble in fear. I know it's difficult to see everything in your life fall apart. Yesterday was my lucky day. So we took our marriage paperwork into the court. We're now husband and wife. Isn't that exciting? Oh, congratulations. I'm so very happy for you. Tom started to prepare for getting his own business set up. If things keep going as they've been, I'll be married to the president of a company. We've moved into a high-rise apartment. I've never lived someplace this high up. I'm sorry that I ended up just receiving so many things from you. A husband, happiness, 
Just so many different things that were yours are now mine. I heard you're living with Thomas's mother and father as well. To be honest, I wasn't really thrilled about the idea of living with them. But it's not so bad. I think living in this high-rise apartment really destroyed any apprehension I had. I'm just taking being able to live here as a price to pay for staying with his parents. Besides, the bedroom is big as well, so it doesn't feel stifling to live with his parents. Oh, well that's nice. Thomas's mother and father are often traveling, so they tend not to be around. Speaking of traveling, do you like Hawaii, Anna? We are talking about maybe having her wedding in Hawaii. And Thomas's mother just started helping us get everything set up for it. So we're actually going to do it now. If you'd like, I could invite you. Do you really have the kind of money to have a wedding in Hawaii? I thought Thomas's whole family was in debt. In debt? What are you talking about? You know that we're living in a high-rise apartment. The only people who live in properties like this are celebrities. You know, people who live in a different world to the one that everyone else lives in. I'm the one who owns that apartment. You do understand that the four of you are to leave this month, yes? What did you say? Wait just a second. This is your property? We have to leave this month? This is the first I've heard of any of this. It's my property because I'm the one who purchased that high-rise apartment. That's also why the four of you need to move out this month. Thomas's parents went bankrupt. I think it happened about two years after we got married. Were you aware that Thomas's family used to run a chain of convenience stores? Yeah. I heard that he was running a company, but retired. He was just the manager of a few local franchises, but he absolutely ruined it. He kept getting moved through the small chain of stores until they all had to be closed. Without his family, he no longer had anywhere to stay. That's why I let his parents use that high-rise apartment I bought. Thomas and I actually used to live there right after we got married, however. When I handed the place over to Thomas's parents, I thought it was a great opportunity for something new. That's when we decided to build this house that I'm currently living in. Then this apartment is really your property? Yeah, that's exactly correct. The apartment is pretty nice, I'll grant you. However, I was able to build the house I'm currently living in to meet my exact preferences. Therefore, I made sure to maintain ownership of this home when I split assets with Thomas, and I handed that high-rise apartment over to him in exchange. That way, his parents could continue to be allowed to live in it. He was quite insistent that all he wanted in the divorce was that apartment. So I had no issue letting him have it. If you handed it over to him in the divorce, isn't it already his property? So it's no longer your property. You can't just decide to kick us out. I'm glad that I still haven't changed the name attached to the property. What do you mean you haven't changed the name of the property? Didn't you hand it over as part of a divorce? What does it matter that you haven't changed a name on the property yet? Well, there's a reason that I left the property in my name. There was something I wanted to look into. I thought I should wait to sign the deed over until after I'd finished looking into everything. That's why I haven't actually consented to the division of assets that Thomas suggested at that time. What did you want to look into? I wanted to look into how he had been using his money. What do you mean? Why do you care how he uses his money? There were some mysterious ex expenses from both our personal accounts and the company account. To put it simply, he'd been using our personal funds on whatever he wanted. But why would it be wrong for him to use the money in your joint personal account on himself once he got married? Shouldn't a husband and wife join their accounts and freely use the money within? Besides, didn't you say he was on the board of directors at your company? hardly ever contributed money to our joint account. He sent the majority of his paycheck to his mother and father. That's the reason why his jobless, penniless parents could go out and travel as much as they liked. As far as the money in the joint account is concerned, 
It's all from me operating my business. If it were for things like living expenses, it would have been no big deal. But still, with all of the things told, I was contributing 70% of the assets. Okay, so what? Additionally, there were weird expenses from the business account. I can't very well forgive him for using that money to fund his dates with his mistress, can I? The cost of our dates? Did he really charge the cost of his dates on his business account? Yeah, the cost of your food, drinks, and hotels. Oh, and we can't forget about all the presents he gave you. Of course, there was that time when he bought you that expensive gown before taking you to the high-end French restaurant. He bought it all with the company's money. That means you're also an accomplice to his theft of company funds. I didn't know anything about that, though. I'll leave it to the police to determine whether or not that is true. The police? You're going to file a claim with the police? Yes. I do intend to file a claim with the police. Anyhow, it wasn't just the cost of your dates. There's also the stupidity to do with the timing of him leaving his job. Doing so right after taking out a huge load of money. I assume as some sort of startup fund. You're saying that money wasn't from savings? We're not talking about the level of one small startup. I've already submitted a report of the damages to the police and the matter will be investigated. My husband is going to be arrested. Soon the police will be helping me retrieve the stolen funds. That includes the money that was used from her joint account. With this revised asset splitting and damages, I think I will retain ownership of the apartment. And my ex-husband will have to pay me to make up the remaining difference. I'm not sure how he's going to pay back that money he's already spent. I imagine she'll be paying it off for a long time. This is the first I've heard of any of this. This isn't what I had planned. It's too bad that you weren't able to marry the rich husband you thought you were marrying. Oh, that reminds me. If you really have already filed the marriage paperwork, the charges will probably fall under your name as well. So please make sure you and Thomas pay it back before the interest starts to accrue. Wait! Let's talk about this. Neither of us is working. There is no way we could possibly pay back any of this. I thought I'd be living off my husband's wealth. So I've used up all of my savings. That is your problem. It has nothing to do with me. How could you be so heartless? You're just jealous of us because you're an old lady who can't have kids. You're just trying to ruin our happiness. What an ugly thing to do. Oh, that's right. I just remembered. There was a message I wanted you to tell Thomas's mother. Why? Tell her yourself. Why do you want me to tell her? This concerns you as well. I won't charge you for the use of my high-rise apartment up until now. But if you intend to continue living there, I'm going to start charging you rent. I think five grand a month sounds fair. Oh, and one more thing, if you don't mind. When their stores went bankrupt, I also lent them some money for living expenses. The move, getting their fares in order, that kind of thing. I want that 50 grand back right away. What? 50 grand? Oh, I still have the contract for when I gave them the loan, so don't worry. Everything is very much above board. When I was married to Thomas, I didn't put any interest or a deadline on the loan. But there was a clause in the contract that if we did happen to get divorced, the loan would start accruing interest. Hey, that's cheating. Oh, I've got another thing to add. Are you serious? There's more? She was worried that I wasn't able to have a child after being married for four years. We actually both had exams to do with that situation. It might be the case that Thomas is actually the infertile one. You checked into it? So the reason we couldn't have children is probably because of Thomas's poor swimmers. What are you saying? Things might have changed now. I mean, it's been two years. But I wouldn't put my hopes too high. You're lying. Well, I think I'll have to be calling my lawyer again shortly. So I'll be going now. You'll be hearing from me or my lawyer again. Please, just hold on a second. I really didn't know anything about any of this. I just lost the lottery. I didn't do anything to deserve this. Please. Don't burden me alongside Thomas with all of his debt. I want a divorce. 
please help me get a divorce. I filed charges with the police over the money laundering that my ex-husband had done at my company. It seems that he'd taken a huge loan out with the laundered money as collateral. There is no way he could have made that much money with his new company. He was just trying to play the part of wealthy husband. Even though he used to be on the board of directors at my company, there was no way he could earn so much money on his own. He had moved upward to his current position because I loved him. But I doubt that trajectory will continue. He's currently living with his parents in a cheap apartment while working like crazy to pay off all his debts. Christina tried to run away from her newly debt-riddled husband, but Thomas's parents weren't going to allow that and did everything in their power to stop her. In the end, she broke away from the family, and she's currently in a drawn-out divorce proceedings. The fact that she slept with another woman's husband got out to her parents, and they were so disappointed they refused to send her any help. I heard that she's been somehow scraping by every day, all on her own, 